Martin Hall joined by Blair O'Neill, former LPGA Tour player, and we're talking about indoor short game practice. Uh, I have a question for you, Blair O'Neill. Okay. Uh, when you were playing around the world, how yes. much short game practice did you do? When I played on tour, my short game practice was a big part of my practice routine. But I will say this. I wish that when I was younger and a junior golfer, I wish I would have spent much, much more time on the short game. It would have helped me when I turned professional. So that's the one regret I have. For all you juniors out there, short game is so important. Yes, it really is. Now, there are things you can do indoors when you can't get out to the golf course for whatever reason uh, that do not involve hitting golf balls. When I was young, which of course was many moons ago, I used to chip golf balls around the house. And it often leads to a very irate mother when you break <laughs> plant pots and things like that. Oh, I've broken a front door window before doing that when I was little. <laughs> right through the front that. door. So look, the drills... Have <laughs> we're, we're going to hit some shots into the simulator so you can see what the ball does. But these drills could be done without golf ball. And I've got three, three drills to do indoor. The first one is to get the path of the swing reasonably online. So I'm just going to take two alignment rods and I'm going to point them about parallel to my target line. I'll come to the golf ball in a moment. Um, you could use two pieces of tape on the garage floor if you wanted to for this, but you don't have to have them too close together. We're going to say they're pointing about at the target. So I've got a gap there. Now that gives me what I would call the base of my swing. And when I'm pitching and chipping short shots, I want to start with my feet close together, just take a small step with the left, a small step with the right, and then just flare the left foot out. I'm not a huge fan of pulling the left foot back, the lead foot back from the line a lot, Blair. I would just start with the feet together, make this a little habit, learn it in the, you know, in the indoors, turn that lead foot out. Now, I would want anybody and everybody, I've seen Jordan speak to this many, many times, learn to move the club a short distance back and through back and through, you can hear me, I'm lightly brushing the mat in the studio here at the Golf Channel. I'm not banging the ground, I'm not missing the ground. I actually think of this club having four little wheels on the bottom of it. I'm trying to run those four wheels along the ground. So I'm trying to brush the grass as I swing back and forth, back and forth. And as I'm doing that, I'm putting a rhythm into it. I've done this for years. One, two, one, two, one, Two. And as the swing gets a bit bigger, I let the feet and the knees and the hips and the shoulders sort of come to the party. So I'm going back and through, but I'm doing anything but trying to stay too still. I want motion. Motion offsets tension. So I'll do that a few times. I don't have to hit a ball at home because I'll probably get told off by Mrs. Hall. <laughs> However, if we have the hitting light on here, I don't know if these uh, sticks might interfere with the computer, but just learn to just brush the swing back and forth and get that Good. club, uh, you know, striking the ball in the right direction. Let's see you try that, Blair. Okay. Um, such a lot to learn. I think all, all skills should be, let's start without the ball to start okay. with. All skills, if they're going to be lasting, need to be learned from small to big and from slow to quick. Small to big, slow to quick. So I'd want anybody, irrespective of standard, prove to yourself you can do it correctly with a small swing. Brush, 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 brush. One of Johnny Miller's favorite terms, this one, brush, brush. Brush, brush, let the swing get a bit bigger, a bit bigger, a bit bigger. Uh, you know, as you're watching this at home, look how the feet and the knees and the hips, shoulders are moving, there's nothing too independent. And, and you get a wonderful rhythm by this. One, two, one, two. And if you have a few swings like that next time you get to the golf course, fairly adjacent to the ball, and then just step up and hit the ball, yep. a lot of the anxiety disappears. So Build some confidence. Much, well, all about building confidence and certainty, isn't it? We want that. So we're just clipping it away. That would be very good. That's right up, right on line, and yep. uh, towards the flag. Now, if we get back a little bit farther from the green, we probably need just a little bit more descent. Or if the lie isn't quite right, because we know they're not always good around the greens. Sometimes you can brush brush like that if the lie is good. But sometimes you need a bit more descent. How can you indoor practice that? Well, it's not too hard, actually. We get rid of one of these alignment rods, and we're going to put the other one at right angles, 90 degrees to the line of flight. Now, I'm going to ask you to pick a spot. I'll put a ball in there in a moment. But I'm going to ask you to pick a spot that is probably about the toe of the club to the heel in front. Maybe, okay. maybe one hand span. And this is going to be a spot where I'm touching the mat there. And I now want to see, not, you're not going to go back and through, back and through here, but I now want to see, can you make a swing, just a short one, where you pick the club up a bit quicker, 
come down a bit sharper. Can you hit the ground about here without hitting that alignment rod? And me, without hitting me as well. I would never hit you, Martin. Not on purpose. I, <laughs> I, I, I hope you would not. But that's a great drill. Yes. Again, not, not too hard for Blair O'Neill, because she's played all over the world and is a very good player. Uh, let me ju let's just trade places. Okay. Let me show you what's likely going to happen. And, you know, those of you that have watched School of Golf over the years and watched me, you know how important I think feedback is. Feedback shows you your blind spots. You might not think you're going to do this, but a lot of you will, a lot of you will set up, and the first thing you'll do is you will do something of that nature. Now, I, again, I exaggerated a bit to make it clear, but you might be surprised that very, very lightly, your club isn't coming down quite sharply enough. And it's not that we want to be chopping the head off a snake. It's not that we're this way, but there's got to be some angle of descent. So I want you to just come back in here now, Blair. I'll give you a little bit of room. This would produce a lower flying shot. Uh, might have a bit more spin on it, actually. Ball might be back in the stands a bit more. So it's not, it's not a very long shot and you're just going to tap down without hitting that alignment rod. And that was very good. That Thank was a you. really good sound. It's easy for me to hear that sound in studio. That was very much ball and then ground. And if the lie isn't very good, it could be hard pan, uh, it could be down in the rough where you've got to dig it out a bit. Um, that's a really good that's way to do it. That's the shot you want. Well, that's the way you want to do it. And that leaves me with one other drill for the alignment rod that I think is really important. Again, you don't need to make too big a swing with this one, but if you take this alignment rod, Blair, and I'll show you what we're going to do here. And this is one that I think is really important for every golfer. Every golfer. Take that alignment rod, put it behind the grip of the club. Okay. And hold it with your lead hand, then your trail hand. Now, when you set up, uh, that, that's, that alignment rod will probably be lightly touching the front side of your body. I feel Very that. Very lightly. As you swing back, of course, if there's any wrist action, it will come away from the body. As you swing forwards, my suggestion is that contact, it should not be touching the side of your body. I'm going to turn to my cameraman here. I don't want to be sort of cracking a rib and banging the side of my body. Um, no good, I've seen way too much of that. So as you go through to at least this point, at least what I call after impact 45, the club being about 45 degrees to ground, uh, only then would that alignment rod lightly, very, very lightly touch the ribs of your body. You wouldn't bang the ribs. And so if we can get people used to swinging in the right direction, which was the two alignment rods, tapping down just a little bit, which gives us the contact, and then learning to swing through without clobbering the lead side of the body. Okay. All so good, for just for short shots. We're just talking 20, 30, 40 yard shots here. So try not to give your ribs on the lead side of your body a crack. Very good. It keeps the hands going through. We hear a lot in golf about you know taking the flip out of it. And you learn to take the flip out of it with these little shots. So uh, three ways you can use alignment rods to help your game when you can't get to the golf course. And the more you do, the better you get. Yes, absolutely. Great drills there. And I hope that this helps improve your short game. For more great tips, make sure to subscribe to Golf Channel on YouTube and watch School of Golf.